So here I'm going to demonstrate how we can get lovely and warm skin by adjusting our CMYK values in RGB. And the first thing I need to do is bring up my info palette. So in CS5 I can either click right here on the eye symbol or if your Photoshop inter interface differs from mine then you can simply go up to Window and click Info or you can just hit F8. So here in the info palette we have here we have the RGB values and to the right of it we have the CMYK values. And when my cursor hovers over the image you can see what the RGB and CMYK values are on that spot that I'm hovering over. And the first thing I want to do is set a little target point, a sample of the general skin that I'm going to be adjusting. Now on a woman you can either place a target either on her chin or perhaps on her forehead but not on a highlight and preferably not on her cheek because it may have makeup on it and it may be giving you a, a, an incorrect reading as to the average CMYK values for his skin type. And if this was a man, then you'd probably want to avoid doing it on the chin because he may have some stubble. And so those CMYK values would be incorrect as well. So, so for him, you'd probably pick a target point on his forehead somewhere. So I'm going to do the same on Rebecca here. And I'm going to pick a, a general mid-tone or a general average of her skin type. So I'm going, going to make sure I don't set a target point on this highlight here above her eye, but instead I'll do it up here somewhere. So first of all, I'll get my eyedropper tool up by hitting the I key. And I've currently got my sample size set to point sample. And I, I want to change that to a much larger sample size. So perhaps 11 by 11 average is, is a good one. So I'll click that. And I want to hold down the shift key and click to leave a little target there. And that, so that's going to be my little sample point that we're going to gauge our CMYK K values against. And you'll see the RGB values have just appeared in my info palette down here. But I don't want them to display the RGB values. I, wanted to, I want them to display the CMYK values. So all you've got to do now is just click on that little eyedropper icon there and scroll down to hit CMYK color. And now I'm displaying my CMYK values for that point. Now I need to bring up my curves adjustment layer. So I'll go down to my adjustment layer icon here and click on curves. And you'll see here that this gradient appears in my curves palette. And down here we have our three quarter tones, our mid tones, and our quarter tones. So this current curve is representing our full RGB spectrum. And if I click on here, we can select individual channels, such as red, green, or blue. And we have to go in there and alter these channels individually to get our correct CMYK values. Now, this sample point of skin here is currently displaying a CMYK value of 11, 20, and 13. So what are the correct CMYK values for good looking skin? Well, the bad news is that there is no exact formula. However, there are a few good rules of thumb. And those are that for white skin, cyan is usually less than half of the magenta. And the magenta always trails the yellow. So there's always a little bit more yellow than there is magenta. For Asian skin, all those values are a little bit higher again. And there is a higher yellow ratio. And for black skin, those values are higher again, and that happens generally to be a higher ratio of cyan in that skin. But this doesn't always apply. So the main rule of thumb that you have to follow is that try and keep what you do as close as possible to the original skin type. So feel free to play around with those CMYK values to get an improved version of that skin that you're working on. Even without looking at this image, I can see that Rebecca's skin is a little bit cool, a little bit too cool, and it's a little bit too pink. And if I look at these CMYK values here, now that I've brought up my curves layer, or my curves adjustment layer, I can see we have two columns of figures here. Now this one here in the middle, or on the one on the left hand side, are our current figures, or our original figures. And the figures on the right here, are going to be the new figures, once we've finished changing those values. But because we haven't done anything, then they're both the same. Now straight off the bat, I can see that the cyan is actually more than half of the magenta. And as I thought, it was looking a bit cool. So what we need to do is pull a little bit of cyan out of this skin. So the first thing we need to do is go to our red channel. Remembering from the previous tutorial that red is opposite of cyan. And to reduce cyan, we need to increase the, the amount of red in the image. Now what I do is I command click on the target point and it's left a little anchor point on our curve, representing how much red there is in this target area in relation to our curves here. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my up and down arrow keys to control these anchor points and I need to increase the amount of red in this image to pull out some of the cyan. So I'm going to tap my up arrow key which is going to increase the amount of red and you can see in my info palette that the amount of cyan is reducing and I'm going to bring it down to about 7% which is a pretty good amount of cyan for fairly fair skin. What I need to do now is control the amount of magenta that's in the skin. Now the skin's looking a little too pink at the moment. Now remembering that green is in effect the opposite of magenta, I'm going to come down here in my curves palette, come down to my green channel, command click on that target point again. Here's my new green anchor point, And I'm going to increase the amount of green in this image just to bring my magenta down a little bit. So I'm going to press the up key until I'm happy with the amount of magenta in the image. Now that looks pretty good. Next we've got to change the yellow. Now we can see that yellow is trailing the magenta by quite a large amount and we need to, we need to bump that up so it's actually sitting equal or preferably above the magenta value. And remembering that blue is the opposite of yellow, we'll come to our blue channel, command click on the target point, there's our new anchor. And now what I need to do is pull blue out of the image to increase the yellow. So I'm going to hit my down arrow key and just tap down until the yellow is sitting above the magenta. So there we are. Now we have a yellow readout of 22%, which is sitting about 3% above the magenta. And I'm looking at the screen here, and I temporarily switch off this curves layer. We can see a before and after. And we can see that the skin is has definitely warmed up. Now there's one thing in this image is, which is bugging me a little bit, and that's the fact that on these collarbones, they're looking very saturated with color, a little too heavy and a little bit distracting from the face. So once again, we can use our curves to pull some color out of those collarbones. So I'm just gonna grab my lasso tool by hitting the L key, scoop up a sample of there, of that uh, collarbone. Once again, come down to our adjustment layers, click on curves. Now. I want to pull a little of every color out of this heavily saturated area. So I'm going to leave it on the full RGB curve here. I'm going to bring up my eyedropper tool by hitting the I key and command click on this area here, which is a little heavily saturated. So I'll just command click right there on the collarbone and there's my new anchor point. And I'm going to use my up arrow key to pull some of the color out of that section to about there. That looks pretty good. Now if I option click on my mask, we can see that that's obviously very rough. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill that with black and gradually paint in that color reduction layer. Now black is currently my foreground color. So all I have to do is hold down option delete and it's going to dump my foreground color into my mask. And remembering for future reference that if your foreground and background colors aren't the default black and white, if they're different colors, then all you have to do is hit the, def the D key and that'll bring up your default black and white, and you just hit the X key to flip between the foreground and the background. And a quick recap, to fill a layer or, or a mask with the foreground color, you hold down Option Delete, and to dump the background color into a layer or a mask, you use Command Delete. So I'm going to Option Click back on my curves to bring me back to the image, get onto my brush tool with a B key, a low opacity of perhaps 30%, so I'll hit the three key for 30%, increase my brush size with the right bracket key, and with white, which is currently my foreground color, and remembering that I have to have a hardness of zero, it's currently had at 100%, we just gradually paint in some of that color lightening area on those areas which I'm finding a little too overly saturated. And on this color bone right here, Right, I'll do a quick before and after, before and after. And that's definitely an improvement. And just a couple of quick final things. Number one, I have my little target area here, this target point. And if you want to remove that in the future, then all you have to do is get onto your eyedropper tool with the I key, hold down the shift key, and click and drag that target point off the image, and it's gone. Also, if you need to remove these anchor points for whatever reason, then all you have to do is click and drag them and pull them off the palette, and they've disappeared. But I want to bring that one back, so I'll hit Command-Z. And so there's an example of how you can play around with your CMYK values using curves 
to get the best possible result for your skin.